Hi, welcome to my channel and thank you to my subscribers. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. In this video, we are going to see how to set up a simple OpenID Connect authorization code grant flow using Azure Active Directory. I have posted similar videos on how to set up authorization code grant flow using AWS Cognito, using Okta. So this video is about Azure AD, uh, but we are going to use uh, some of the same tools that I used in the previous videos. So I will go through all those uh, tools that I'm going to use. So the first step is to create a Azure AD developer account. So you can go ahead and search in Google. If you search for Azure AD developer account, you will find uh, this Microsoft website where you where you can follow these steps to create a developer tenant. And once you create a developer tenant, you can log into the Azure AD portal, which is portal.azure.com. And then you will be presented with this kind of a console. And here you can click view, manage Azure Active Directory, and then it will take you to the Azure Active Directory console. So for this, video i'm going to use the chrome browser for making all the azure ad configurations and i'm going to use the mozilla browser for testing the open id connect authorization code grant flow and for that i'm going to use this open id connect playground which is a very handy application it, it's available in the internet you can go to this domain openidconnect.net and then you can do some configurations here to plug in this client application with any identity provider like Okta or Cognito or Azure AD or Auth0 or any identity provider. So I'm going to use this OpenID Connect Playground for showing a demo of how this end-to-end -end flow works with Azure AD using OpenID Connect authorization code grant flow protocol. So the very first step that we need to do is create an OpenID Connect client in Azure AD. So in order to do that, uh, if you if you have already logged into the Azure portal, which is portal.azure.com, and then open this default directory, the Azure AD directory, you need to go to this particular option, which says app registrations. So you can go to app registrations and click a new registration and you can name this anything like I'm going to name this as OIDC playground because that is the that is the application which I'm planning to integrate with Azure AD which is the OpenID Connect playground. The next step is it will ask for certain options like whether uh, this application should allow access to only users within this default directory or it should allow access uh, to users from multiple Azure AD directories. So you don't have to worry about these things as of now you can leave it as the default option which is basically allowing users only from this default directory to access that application. So the key attribute here is this redirect URI. So we need to provide the URL where Azure AD will redirect the user after a successful authentication. And if you remember the OpenID Connect authorization flow, the flow starts from the client application, which is the service provider, and then it redirects to the identity provider, which in this case is Azure AD. And once the user successfully authenticates, the identity provider which is Azure AD will redirect back to the service provider, which is the OpenID Connect Playground. So, and OpenID Connect Playground is a web app. So you can select this as web and you need to provide the redirect URL of that OpenID Connect Playground. So if you go back to Mozilla browser, you can check the redirect URI here and it is openidconnect.net slash callback. So copy this, add it here and register the application. So we are done with creating an OpenID Connect application in Azure AD. It is very simple, like they have made it pretty easy. So now we have created an OpenID Connect application in Azure AD. 
the very next step is to configure the URLs in this OpenID Connect Playground so that when I try to access this application, it has to redirect to Azure AD. So I need to configure all those Azure AD login URLs, token endpoint URLs, where this playground can get the tokens. So I need to configure all those things. In order to do that, open this configuration. By default, you will see some configuration here and you can ignore that. Just go ahead and select custom. So all these values will get deleted. I will delete all these things. So we need to provide the discovery document URL, which, which will automatically load all these URLs. So all the other URLs like the token endpoint, authorization endpoint, the token keys endpoint, all these things. So let's go back to Azure portal. So now I need to get this endpoint. So how to get this endpoint? So let's actually go back to Google, search for Azure AD well-known endpoint. So the very first link we get is the Microsoft uh, documentation. Let's try to actually open it. And then do a control F and search for well-known. So you will find this URL. So if you look at this URL, it says login.microsoftonline.com slash tenant ID slash b2.0 slash well-known open ID configuration. So let's actually copy this and paste it here and copy this uh, remaining part of the URL. Paste it here. So right now it gives an error because I need to actually provide this tenant ID. So let's go back to this Azure portal, default directory, overview. So this is the tenant ID. So if you look at this, this is the tenant ID of my developer tenant. And each tenant in Azure AD will have a unique identifier. So if you create your developer tenant, you will get a different ID. So this is how Azure AD identifies a particular tenant. So when I try to access that OpenID Connect Playground, using this tenant ID, Azure, Azure AD will know where it needs to redirect to, which particular Azure AD tenant it needs to redirect. So let's copy this and replace this tenant ID with that value and enter. So now you see some response with some token endpoint, authorization endpoint, all those things. So let's copy this, go back to Mozilla, paste it here and click use discovery endpoint. So you, you already noticed here that it automatically loaded all the URLs. So now the remaining values that we need to configure is the OIDC client ID and the OIDC client secret. And this scope is already pre-populated and let's use just open id profile email for now let's remove that phone and address so we need to get these two values so let's go back to the azure ad console and go to the app registrations oidc playground so if you look at this overview this is the client id value so copy this client id paste it here again go back to the azure ad console so we we need the client secret so if you go to certificates and secrets and click a new client secret you can name it anything any meaningful value i will add it as version one so i got a client secret value here so copy this client secret paste it here save this configuration so now the configuration is saved you can see this url login.microsoftonline.com so the OpenID Connect Playground got updated with this latest configuration. Now before testing this end-to-end -end flow I need to create a test user in this directory. So let me go to the users screen. I already want have one default user who is the administrator of this tenant which is my email address. The email address that I used to register in the Microsoft uh, Azure portal. So that email address gets registered as a test user by default. I can even use this email address for testing, but I don't want to use this user ID. Uh, so I will create a new user. 
and I will name it as OIDC test user one. You can fill all these details. I will select this option. Let me create a password. And then you can scroll down here and you will see remaining values. You, you don't have to really fill these values. So just create this user and refresh this. Uh, sometimes it will take some time to get refreshed. So don't, if it doesn't refresh even after a long time, just do a con full browser refresh. So now you see that user ID, OIDC test user one. So if you look at the user attributes, the email address is not set. So let's actually edit this profile and configure the email address, like add the email address. And let's actually use the same value as the email address. So if I go here, so the email address got added. So you can go to this properties and check the email. So I just used the same value. The domain of this uh, user principal name is actually the tenant name, uh, which I used. And this on microsoft.com is a standard subdomain. If you want to use some custom domain, you need to customize it. But for this testing, you don't really need those things. So the user got created. So let's go back to uh, Mozilla and start this flow and let's see what happens. So I got redirected to my Azure AD tenants login page. So now I need to enter that uh, user ID. So let's go back here and copy this. And I need to enter that same password that I used when I created this user. And click sign in. So now the authentication is successful and I'm getting the consent screen. If you look at this consent screen, it says I need to provide permission to access to uh, for I need to provide permission to Azure AD to share these basic profile details with this application, which is the OIDC playground applications. So by, by default, Azure AD shows this consent. This is just an additional step in the OpenID Connect authorization code grant flow. As per the protocol, the user needs to provide consent to share their own profile details with the application. And in this case, the application is OIDC Playground. So I click accept. So this application now got a code. And when I click exchange, so the access token and ID token got generated and then click next. The ID tokens uh, value is here and I click verify. I can see all the attributes in the ID token. So here you can see the name of the user profile that I created. It is OIDC test user one and then the email which I updated later on. But we don't see the remaining attributes like given name, last name. So let's go back to the Azure AD console and check how to add the given name last name in the id token so if you again go back to azure active directory app registrations oidc playground and token configuration so here let's click this add optional claim and select id token because i want to add these attributes to the id token so here you can select family name, given name, and if you want to include anything else, any other attributes, you can check here. You can go through this entire list and include it. Maybe let's include the auth time. Anyway, that's not required. So as of now, we are interested only in family name and given name. Click add. 
you will get this pop-up on to turn on the Microsoft graph profile permission to include these attributes. So select that option, click add. So now we got this uh, uh, configuration done. Let's go back to Mozilla and uh, let's actually refresh this entire screen. And uh, let's start over. And now when I click start, it won't show the login page again. The reason is I already have a valid session with Azure AD. And that is the reason why it is not showing the login page. But now when I exchange the token, I should see those additional attributes. Yes, so I see those additional attributes, the given name, family name, which I used like the same values that I entered when I created this profile. So this is how you configure a simple OpenID Connect application which supports authorization code grant flow with Azure AD and then test the end-to-end -end flow using this OpenID Connect Playground application. In case you face any issues in configuring this application, please post your questions in the comments and I will be happy to respond. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. And again, please subscribe to my channel.